Hi, welcome back to this Monday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. You are a part of the White Horse Platoon, the White Horse Brigade, uh, the White Horse, a symbol of truth. We are writers on the White Horse. We follow the writer on the White Horse whose name is Faithful and True. We are in pursuit relentlessly of the truth. We will not stop until we have tagged it and bagged it. We are the truth posse writers on the White Horse. Let's grab a couple of phone calls. Taking phone calls on a number of different topics, how long Kirsten Powers is going to be able to be politically progressive and theologically conservative. What do you think about the uh, mother, the homeschooling mom, whose uh, children were ordered into public school by a judge because they thought they needed to be socialized? Uh, what do you think about that? We've talked about a couple of other topics. Glad to have you weigh in on anything that we have talked about uh, today. Just did a story about how uh, Saudi Arabia is repatriating 80,000 illegal immigrants back to their native land, back to their homeland, back to the place from which they came, back to their the land of their birth. And the Ethiopian government is paying the freight for that. Uh, so very clearly, repatriation is something that can be done if people are motivated and if they have enough commitment to enforce their own immigration laws. Well, let's go. 888-589-8840, number to call if you want to join the program. Let's begin with Brandy in North Oklahoma. Brandy, welcome. What's on your mind? Um, I'm calling about the immigration, but first I want to thank you and Kevin McCullough. In the last four or five months, you guys alone have changed my life. Wow. Um, but I want to call, and it's very um, touching to my heart subject, the immigration. I've been married to an illegal immigrant for 14 years. We have done everything immigration asks us of, pay the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for never to get approved for anything. It, they have made an industry out of denying people. Even after we've paid, my husband has never broken the law other than being here when he was a child, illegal, and that's when we met. And it breaks my heart. You, know, you All the government, they say, oh, the illegals, they drain welfare. I know thousands of illegal immigrants none of it no there's no illegal immigrant that i can think of or know of that actually use welfare you know mm -hmm. the government and they say those things to get people like you or people to you know to think oh those illegals are here to drain our system they don't use food stamps they mm -hmm. don't use welfare if they're sick they they have the money they pay for that you know and i wish people can see and granted and don't get me wrong i know that there's the drug dealers there's there are the wrong ones out there you know but not all illegal immigrants are here because they just you know broke the rules came over illegal and don't want to abide by it hmm. well, and what i hear you, you saying know? brandy and this is kind of what i what i want to focus on from your phone call what i what i hear you saying if i understood you correctly you, you and your husband are and, and, and are you a citizen and and your husband yes, sir. Okay, so every, you're, you're trying to do everything that you possibly can. You're willing to jump through whatever hoops they set for you. You're willing to stand in whatever line they ask you to stand in. You're willing to fill out whatever forms they ask you to fill out. You're willing to pay whatever fees you need to pay in order for him to become a naturalized citizen of the United States. And you just run in to one barrier and one obstacle uh, after another. Yes, and we have children. We have three children. Um through this and the last time you know it's kind of you got to hope and you pray that the, that the, Im the uh, immigration official on the other side of that counter has jesus in their heart because mm -hmm. they can look at you and say M the last time they told my husband no we feel you need to come back in 10 years and try it again mm -hmm. so for 10 years we lived lives in the u.s and mexico moving our children as much as he to let them see him as much as they could just because the person on the other side of that counter, not because he had broken any rules, but just because the person that was on the other side of that counter saw him with an American woman and decided that he needed to come back in 10 years and try again because they think these people aren't going to be together in 10 years. Yeah. Well, you know, and the thing, Brandy, that, that I think, and I don't know if this upsets you, but what what you're seeing is a, a lot of people that are breaking Im our immigration laws, they're coming across the border without being invited into this country, and then they're clamoring to be placed at the head of the line and sort of be given an automatic path to citizenship sort of instantaneously with very little cost, very little effort, very little delay, 
And I would think for someone like you and your husband that have waited patiently, try to do everything right, you, that, that would seem fundamentally unfair or unjust to you that people who haven't waited in line like you have, haven't played by the rules like you have, are now clamoring to be sh sent to the front of the line and are probably going to wind up being ushered right to the front of the queue. Yeah, I mean, it is. It, uh, it, it does, but then and then I understand where they're coming from. But then, uh, yes, it's right. You know, um, I don't think that, you know, I think anybody with a U.S. born child, you should be able to become, I mean, give them fines. Give them a, you know, a sturdier path to citizenship. But if you have U.S. born citizen children, you should be able to become a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, yeah, I do. And should, yeah, and that, that put them people first. Yeah, and, and, and that, you know, raises a larger question about whether birthright citizenship is in the Constitution or not. But the point I want to get to, Brandy, and, you know, you and I might even have a different uh, difference in point of view on that. But the point that, that I want to get back to is, you know, w we are in favor of legal immigration. We are in favor of those that have a legal right to be in this country uh, who are invited into this country. We're in favor of moving them through the immigration process as expeditiously as possible, naturalizing those that are committed to become American citizens adopt our values, our heritage, our history, our heroes, and all that. We are all for that. And it, it, it bothers us uh, when we see people that really don't have an interest in assimilating, becoming Americans. And it sounds to me, Brandy, like, like you and your husband, you want to be Americans. You want to become Americans. You want to adopt our values, our history, our traditions, and all that. I mean, that's the way it sounds to me. Am I right about that? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, and see, that's the thing that bothers me is we've got a lot of people that really have no interest in assimilating. They don't want to become Americans. They want to hang on to, uh, the, you know, to, to whatever values that they uh, got from their homeland, and they want those values to be enshrined here. They don't want to have to assimilate. They don't want to have to learn our language. They don't want to have to accept kind of our customs and our way of doing things. And you know, we got no problem with people hanging on to their own native traditions and customs and all that and celebrating them through, at, at different times during the year. That just adds color and vibrancy, uh, you know, to American life. But we do object to people that come to this country but do not intend to become full-fledged Americans, 100% Americans, no hyphens, just 100% uh, Americans. All right, Brandy, listen, thanks for the call. Thanks for sticking around and chatting. I appreciate that. Uh, let's go to Barry in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Uh, Barry, Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. Hey. I really enjoy your show, and uh, I just got a few things I want to comment on and uh, ask you about. Uh, one, they keep talking about this immigration stuff and everything, but why do we not, with the laws that's already on the books, why do we not already enforce them? Well, you know, and, and, and Barry, uh, th that's the problem. Is, is Our laws are perfectly fine. We're just not enforcing them. Right, and that's why I say, why why are we not making this government enforce them? And then another thing I want to comment on is uh, the Kirsten Power thing. I, I, I'm so glad she's uh, given her life to Christ, but at the same time, I, th there's just no way with all the, the homosexual agenda and all that kind of things that goes with it, she won't be able to keep her, her liberalism <laughs> As well, so so what, what what you're seeing is that she's probably going to have to come to some kind of Rubicon moment. And uh, that, that yeah. analogy, Rubicon, is when Caesar came to the Rubicon River, and if he crossed the river, he was committing himself to go to war against the sitting emperor in the city of Rome. And when he crossed the Rubicon, there was no turning back. And so he had a decision to make right there at the Rubicon River. And and kind of what you're suggesting is, is, is Kirsten Powers is going to come to that Rubicon moment where she's got to make a choice and right and and i and deeper, when she gets deeper in her faith i think she's gonna find out that she can't she can't straddle be as close to the fence as she is right now well you know it's interesting and I, and I agree with you and and i frankly barry i agree with you i think that issue is going to be the homosexual agenda i mean that's going to be the place where she's going to have to decide you know which team she really uh belongs to the team of truth or the team of, of error and that's going to be her you know, that's going to be her decision point. Right. You know, and, and maybe God is just kind of bringing her along. We were talking on the break here among right. ourselves that, um, you know, maybe God is waiting for when the time is right for her to face that challenge. And and hey. maybe he's given her a little space to get her prepared for that. But I think there's going to come a time when she's going to have to make a choice. 
You know, Jesus one time said to the disciples, I have many more things to share with you, but you were not able to bear them yet. In other words, you're not mature enough yet. You're not far along in your faith to handle this level of truth or this amount of truth or this intensity of truth. So I'm going to protect you from that for a time until you're a little bit further along. And maybe he's doing something like that with Kirsten Powers, but but uh, she's going to she's going to have to make a choice. And the choice ultimately is going to have to be between the homosexual agenda and the person of Jesus Christ. Hey, hey Brian, let me ask you this. How's the Obamacare website coming along? <laughs> well, it's funny you should ask. Thanks for the call, Barry. Let's answer that question. Rob, grab, uh, grab clip number seven, uh, if we can. Speaking of the Obamacare uh, website, uh, CNN decided this morning, you know, the, the, or yesterday morning, and, and Obama's out and saying, hey, it's working. 80% are going to have a smooth. It's going to be no problem. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So CNN said, okay, let's, gonna t- let's take President Obama at its word. This is after the, Dece- the November 30th deadline. This is December 1. Everything's supposed to be fixed. Everything's supposed to be hunky-dory. So CNN decided they would live go to Obamacare, healthcare.gov, and try to get on. Here's what happened. Clip one. Well, right, Jim. What insurers are worried about is this idea that once the website's working and people can actually go on and sign up, that their personal data won't get transmitted correctly to insurance companies. Insurance companies need that data to enroll people. And when I talk to officials in the insurance industry, they're telling me that that information is coming across. It's inaccurate. It's duplicative. And in some cases, they're not getting it at all. Okay, that sounds like a major problem to me. Does that mean that people who thought they were insured when they sign up actually don't have coverage? Well, that's the concern, and the insurers need this information. They need good data to make sure that people get enrolled. They need to know where people live. They need to know who their dependents are. And without this information, uh, there's there's big trouble brewing, and insurers are worried that the worst-case scenario is somebody goes through the website, they click sign up, they think they have insurance, but the insurers never got that information so that when they go to the doctor, they're not actually enrolled in a plan. And it's a little bit like going to Amazon, hitting the buy button, and then not having Amazon send that information to the warehouse, and then you never receive your product. So that's the latest on Obamacare. We'll have another clip from that CNN report about the trouble. And what they're talking about there is what's called the back end of the website. I mean, once you sign up and pick a plan, that information has got to be sent to an insurance company so you can get set up with a policy. That information is not getting to the insurance companies or it's all garbled information and useless to them. Huge problems. Obamacare long from being settled. Focal Point AFR Talk.